You know, standing back there with you, I was like, man, they might, they might, they might receive it more. They might receive it more if you wear this shirt instead of the one you got on. Uh, <laughs> man, it's a it's a blessing to be up here. Uh, so, I want everybody to go to Ephesians chapter six. We're going to start at verse ten. So I'm gonna, I'm going to go through this step by step here a little bit. Um, but the title of the message is in recovery mode. And uh, so while everybody's uh, so, uh, you know searching, <clears throat> one thing I want to point out, um, you know, anybody that's ever worked out or uh, previously worked out, uh, currently working out, um, one of my you know my main things I do you know today is when I get off work, I'm either going to work out at the house or, or go to Planet Fitness on the way home, and uh, lifting weights, training is not easy now getting up every morning is not easy um, every day it's always some kind of battle with something um, but you know there's fatigue behind working out you know your endurance um, your stamina uh, I wish to God I didn't have to work out to stay in shape it'd be so much easier to just have a, an athletic build and just keep it and not do a single thing but when you stop working out you lose your athletic build. I mean, it completely goes away. And the worst part about it, because I mean, you put all this time, I mean, like, I, I put over 10 years in lifting weights, and then I'm out two weeks because of a, you know, my bum hand, and then my wife grabs my shoulder and goes, oh, it's feeling kind of squishy. And I'm like, bro, I've put over 10 years building this shoulder. It should not feel like squishy after two daggone weeks. She done it whether or not she's telling me the truth or whether or not she's just wanting to annoy me, which she does a lot, you know. Love you, hon. But, like, she's like, she grabbed me like this, like, squishy. Like, what did you just say? Like, I knew what she was talking about. She's talking about, like, babe, you're losing some muscle here. Like I said, I put in over 10 years before me and her were together. When I say consistent working out, I mean consistently four, five, six, seven days a week. I mean, I mean, because what comes along with that? You got fatigue, sweat, blood pumping, you're tearing muscle, you know. But in order to get to that athletic build, you have to do it consistently. It's not you don't work out one day a week and think, oh, I'm going to see results from this off of one day. It's something that you, and, and, and not to mention, you've got your forearm. You know, you got the forearm right here and you got part of it right here. You get to buy, try, shoulder. This, by the way, that's not squishy. I just want to point that out. And uh, you got your back, you know, your, your rhomboids, your traps. I mean, your quads, you know, there's tons of muscle fibers you got going on. There's tons of sections. And each one has to be worked out. So, uh, you know, you go through that consistent process, and, but, but you have to be consistent. That's like, the, it's so paramount at working out. But it's the recovery portion that's the most vital. Because anytime you talk to somebody that works out, I say, hey, man, how many days do you work out a week? How many days do you work out a week, Patrick? I know you work out. Four, four, so, so what does that mean? Also, means that means you take three days of recovery. That's the most important part of Patrick working out is those three days of recovery. And I've been there before to where I want to get back in there and work out because I feel like I've deflated. So I'll get back in there and be like, man, there's something I've missed. I can do something extra. So I get back out there and I start working out again. It's like, well, dude, if you don't recover, you're going to lose this because you will. You start tearing yourself down. So working out, you're tearing muscle fibers. Also, what happens then whenever you get blood pumping, that blood fills in the gaps. It fills in the tears and, you know, builds. It's like, it's like a, it's a scar. So it scars up and it rebuilds and then whenever you start doing it again. And then once it gets bigger after recovering, then the process continues and it never ends. So you constantly work out. So I was like, you know, and, and God gave me this message of re recovering. But see, it isn't just working out. It's working out with good form. Because you can go in there and do 10 bad reps, but I'm going to get further doing five good reps than you are doing 10 bad reps. You see, people, I've seen people all the time in the gym. It was a guy that uh, had, had, kept, he had to have surgery on the inside of his elbow. Now, he was in his 60s, but he's still in the gym. And he, he come in there, he, he was just like, man, I'm, I might do incline 275. That's extreme. You see professional athletes. I mean, like, we're talking Saquon Barkley. Uh, I mean, linebacker Ray Lewis doing stuff like that, repping it out. And he's coming in there, and he's 
So, so, so he came in, I remember him sitting down on the bench. And then he had the bar, and he, you know, his, his son's behind him. And, he, and he's like, yeah, I'm, you know, he was bragging about doing like 10. But now this is how far he would come down. And it aggravated me every time because I wanted to say something to him. But in his mind, he's doing something, right? So, he, so, so he's got that bar, and then he, you know, he, he brings it down. I, not lying. Uh, 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 uh. And then he gets up. His arm, he couldn't, it was an uncontrollable shake he'd have on. He'd like, man. And he just thought to himself he was doing something. And the whole time I'm like, bro, you are going to tear something. You're not doing the rep correctly. I felt so bad. Never said anything to him. Because, I mean, he was a lot older than me, and he wasn't going to hear it anyways. You can tell when somebody's not going to hear it regardless of you telling them the truth or not. You can give them the word all day, but that don't mean they're going to hear it. You can tell them the truth all day, but if they're so stuck in their own mind, they're not going to understand it. Even when you've pointed them out that it's wrong and it's completely, completely contradicts the Word of God, they're not going to hear it. Their mind's made up. We just got through talking about that. Me and, me and Alan did also. We, I mean, when your mind's made up before, it's done. So he's, so he, he just, he would do it all the time. And it wasn't just an incline, it was flat bench. He done the flat bench the same way. I never once saw a, 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 a correct rep. And he's doing weight that I would max out at. And uh, then he come in the gym. Well, I ain't seen him in a long time. He come in the gym and uh, he's got bandage all around his arm. Like, what happened, man? I had to have surgery. Yep, tore, you know, messing this up. I got to have this, got to have that. And I'm like, bro. I didn't say nothing because I knew what was going to happen. It was just like, man, you are lifting so much weight and you're not even doing it right and you're wondering why you're tearing yourself. So, and then you can't recover. It, it's a, it's, look, when you're working out and you're repping something, if you do not recover, you're not going to get better to get to the next level. But he's doing weight that's completely out of his control that he's not asking for no help with or even uh, like, hey, am I doing this correctly? God, am I doing this correctly? Because I feel like I'm out of the wheel here. I feel like I've moved a little bit too far. But... I'm, I, I'm working out, but I, I'm only doing this. And I, I, I get, you know, he, he would get up and, you know, he just, just walk around like he did something. And man, it aggravated the crap out of me. But mine made up. And then now he's in worse shape before whenever he thought he was doing something. And then, but if he would have come in there and said, hey, I'm going to cut this weight in half. I'm, I've told many people that. that you, you see people struggling with weight. I'm like, hey, you know what? which is what we call ego lifting. Hey, won't you cut that weight in half? Just cut it in half. That way you can actually get reps out of it. Because you're not doing anything if, you can't, you know, if you're just going all crazy with the weight. There's a certain process to working out. And then so, obviously, I lift weights all the time. And uh, as you can obviously tell, you know, because, you know, my, my extremely, this is a, a you know, medium, not a medium shirt, by the way, Alan. Um, but, uh, but like, it's hard to look, you know, it, it, if, if you want to see results, you have to be consistent. You have to be, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a lifestyle. Being a believer is a lifestyle. It's something you do every day. Reading the Bible, something you do every day. You know, I mean, like, it, life is on repeat. If you think about it, think about, it, like, Monday, chest. Tuesday, man, you know what? Sometimes, I, you know, I, I'll go back and forth, switch it up. But, like, Monday, I've got chest. And then I'll throw in a little bit of back. Tuesday, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do back, throw in a little bit of chest. Wednesday, arms, man. Bicep, tricep. Still might throw in a little bit of back, a little bit of legs. And then Thursday, time to hit the shoulders. Time to hit the traps. Friday, I want to squat. Oh, go out there and deadlift. All right, BJ, you've wasted, for, you, you, well, you, you spent four or five days this week. Now you've minimized it to two days of recovery. So what are you going to do about Monday? Because now you only got one day of recovery. Monday's chest, dude. All right. We'll go back to life, you know, go back to repeat. But are you going to ever recover at one point? But I, but see, I, I but, but like, I mean, anybody that lifts weights, you know, you're constantly breaking your muscle down. But you, but it's a building process. So, but what, you know, but what if I'm not resting at all? What if I just work out constantly? Boom, 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 seven days a week, and don't stop. What if I'm just constantly working out? What if seven days a week I spend focusing on working out, and I mean going in there doing the exact same thing I do on certain on certain days that I've already got scheduled. And I just continue the process. I don't ever stop. Something's going to happen. You run the risk of injury. 
Huge, huge risk. These athletes, they have to have, they have to have a recovery portion when they get all, like, and I've seen it. They get uh, done playing football, they go hit the ice bath, lower the inflammation of your body. They have to. They go through this, you know, this recovery portion. But see, you get to a point of working out. Eventually, when you do too much, what does your body tell you? It'll, your body will shut down, man. It's like, whoa, 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 pump the brakes. But I feel like doing shoulders today. Well, I don't. You're not doing it. And then the second you go do that rep, ah, uh, bro. I, need, I don't even think pre-workout will help me at this point. It's eventually where you have to stop. I've got to recover. And that's all the time, man. Your body will tell you eventually, you better chill out. You've done way too much. You're going outside what you're supposed to. You're doing it and, and, and you're not being smart. You're hurting yourself. I want to go spiritual here. Now let's go spiritual. God, I fight my flesh every day. I'm, I, I'm fighting things of the spirit. Uh, and and I can't, I'm tired and I can't move. I've worked out all week. I'm done. I need rest. And I haven't even recovered yet. It's been five minutes and I've been in church and already I'm under another attack. Somebody done got up and said something in the pulpit that didn't inflame my flesh because I don't agree. Now all of a sudden I can't even focus on the sermon. I'm focused on myself. I ain't even been in here five minutes and already somebody has triggered me. God, I come here for rest. I come here because I just, I, I want to hear the Spirit. I want to recover. But for some reason, I hear something. Or it's like, Satan's in here listening to the service now. And I can feel him, I can just hear him whispering in my ear. You know y'all don't get along? And yet you in the same building? As if Satan isn't already in here waiting on somebody to say something. I, I, I mean, I knew he was in here one time. But I can't even hear it. Already I'm, I, I'm getting an attack. The, the opposition already. I leave, I leave church, boom, it's right there waiting on me at the door. Or I'm sitting here and it's like, man, I come here to hear the word to recover, bro, and to worship. And I can't do it now because Satan's speaking to me. Uh, or, or my flesh is acting up. Or these demons are, are saying stuff. Now I can't even focus. But God, I came here for my, my, my rest. When am I going to get my rest? Your rest is a choice. Whether or not you want to receive that rest or not. And I'm starting to understand this a little bit more and more as I get older, older I get. Because, like, I mean, I look forward to going to bed at night. I look forward to going to sleep and I hate waking up. Absolutely hate it. Man, I, 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 I sometimes I don't even, like, uh, me and Nicole be sitting there. I just get up and walk to the bed. <laughs> what is that? Good night. Love you. I'm, I'm already in the bed, man. How can I rebuild God? How can I rebuild if you're not allowing me to rest? Building muscle is not easy. Being a believer is not easy. But through Christ, Christ made everything possible through His Word. Everything's possible. But, but, but here's the thing, and I mentioned this weeks ago when Alan called me whenever I was on my last day of, of what the doctor told me that I didn't have to work. And then Alan called me, hey, I need you to drive for me. Bro, I'm sitting here and I got a plan. I've got, a, I, 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 I've got a schedule day. I've got the kids. I am going to chill today. And yet you need me. God, it hasn't been five minutes I've been in this church and I'm already under, under another attack. Why can't I rest? I can't build with you, God, if you don't let me rest. How many times have we literally asked questions like, God, I don't get it. I'm tired. I think God, when it comes to rest, there's, there's different ways of rest. It's not just being able to lay down and sleep because God's got a plan and I, I don't. So I'm like, all right. So like, I was just like, all right, let's go. But I knew that mindset, all right, I know how to drive. I'm going to help out. That way, he's not searching for this. I can say, hey, two packages, here's a SID number. We can work in tandem. Tandem together, and we'll get this done quick. Not worried. I was just ready to go do it, get it done with. And so was he. But the whole point is, is that I was ready to get up. Like, all right, I know what to do because I'm consistent with it. I mentioned this when I opened up the service. I'm consistent with what I do. So, and I've worked with somebody else before. Alan's right here calling out. Uh, so like, uh, you know, he can just say before he even says how many packages. Uh, sit number uh, 5,500, two packages. All he got to do is get out and go for, look for the two packages because he already knows. You're working in sync. I'm consistent because I've already done it before. So I know. I work out with it. So it's embedded in here. You see what I'm saying? So now I want to get to reading. So now we're going to start with, with Scriptures 10 through 12. Now I'm reading out of the King James Version. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord 
and the power of his might, and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Every day is a constant battle. It's a spiritual battle, and there's not a single demon spirit that is, that is going to put his hold and be like, you know, I'm just not going to mess. Every single demon spirit, everything that is evil is against you. No matter what, every single morning, when you go to sleep, when you're at your most vulnerable part of your life, when you're asleep, you know, you're just laying there and just not thinking about anything, just going to bed. Every single one is against you. That's so crazy, man, is that opposition is just always boom, boom. You just constantly feel the pressure from the opposition. But see, God says put on the full armor. Because he knows without that armor you can't grow. But I thought I've got to grow into the armor. No, God just says put on the full armor. The growing process is through him. Put on the full armor. But you, and, and, and throughout Scripture, God is about filling, cup, cup running over. He's always about fullness. He's always about the whole, the completeness. You don't have to go to the Scripture, but I just want to read it. Uh, Isaiah 54, 17, a very, very popular Scripture. No weapon formed against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. So weapon, meaning a vessel, tool, whatsoever, or artillery. So it could be a person. It could be the devil. It could be anything that Satan can use against you or your flesh can use against you. Anything. It will be formed. You will see it and you will look at it. And wiles, and this kind of caught my attention. If you go, you know, and this is me going back to verse 11 of Ephesians 6. Is it wiles, trickery, method? There's a thinking process of Satan. Strategic. I was like, man, hmm. Strategy. Schemings. Mm. Schemings is what she said. Like, man, you're putting a thought into how you want to come at me. You're putting, like, you're actually thinking. It's like a football game. It's strategic. You, you have to have certain plays. I know he's running this route, but if I put this defense, it's going to block that from happening. Prevent offense will prevent you from what? It's, a, it's, it's called a prevent. Oh, sorry, prevent defense. It's called prevent because they don't want and, and prevent only means in case they decide to do a Hail Mary. If I got to prevent defense, it's just supposed to block that. It's a prevent defense. It's, it's designed. There's a method to that defensive play. But see, Satan looks for weakness. He thrives off that. He thrives off of weakness. Your flesh, weak points. I might be strong. I might, you know, I, I'm so steadfast in my salvation. But if I'm not working on my spiritual life in depth, then there's so many chinks in the armor. There's things I might not have put on. So why would Satan necessarily just go for my, like, hey, you know, try to convince me of uh, something else other than salvation? He might attack something else. Your trust. Your faith. Anything. Satan's going to go after that. Because then you take your attention off this. Like, well, why am I getting attacked? There's obviously a method to what he's doing. There's something else going on. You have recovery in the supernatural and in the natural. And, and, and I've mentioned this before. We thank God after the situations, which is not a, a bad thing to do. It's good. You're giving praise. You, you are doing, I mean, like, hey, Lord, I've come through this. Thank you. 100%. That is good. I just got done working out. Now it's time to flex in the mirror. And I know I'm not the only one in here that's ever done it. Especially ones that are into lifting weights. We've walked by that mirror and checked ourselves out at one point because I do all the time. I'm a little full of myself. I give that. But still, when I work out, the reason why I look is because I want to see something different. I want to see something grow, which is why I do that. And any athlete, professional athlete, will look in the mirror or they've got tons of selfies on that phone or in that house somewhere. I promise you that. There's not one time where we didn't walk by and get up and just flex. Especially after you get a good pump, like right, a good pump. Good pump, that feels good, right? You've done burned, you've built up that lactic acid, and then you get up, you got the, you got, you're all vascular, right? And you're just like, bro, I didn't have it before, but now I do because I did 10 good reps. God, I'm giving you praise because I've, I've worked out this entire time and I made it through. Thank you, Lord. So I started relating to this to me working out. I was just like, man, 
I'm giving God praise after I didn't quit during the exercise. I didn't give up during the exercise. I continued going. I didn't stop. My, like what I had planned in there was like, man, I am going to go through this because I want to get stronger. I want to build. I'm getting those 10 reps. I'm aiming for 10 good reps with perfect form. Perfect form. Form first. What they say, right? Is there, the, the slogan is form first. I'm going to hit that with good form. That way when I get up, I know I've done something. And I had, I mean, it's, a, it's, literally like, it's literally a building process. So after I've gone through a spiritual, you know, spiritual battle, I'm going to give praise. But here comes the time to rest. So the demons are just going to leave you alone. It's time to rest. You done went through this trial. Demons ain't going to mess with you. Don't worry about it. Satan ain't going to bother you. Don't worry about it. The flesh ain't going to bother you. Don't worry about it. This is, they are going to give you time to rest. Obviously, everybody knows that's not true. Satan ain't going to stop. Demons ain't going to stop. Your flesh is never going to stop. But God, I, it's been two months. It's been a year. I've been working out for a long time. You'd think you'd let me have some rest. I've got to recover at one point. They're never going to stop. Because one of the last things they want you to do is praise God once you come out of the valley. So it's like, they don't want you praising God before or in the middle, and they daggone sure don't want you praising afterwards because obviously you've come through something that they wanted you to stay in. They wanted you to be on a repetitive cycle. You're constantly going through that, 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 that same circle. It's just like, man, I'm still here. Why am I still here? Why am I still here? They want you to always ask that, that question. Satan don't ever want you to figure the answer out. A method, to, there's a, thank you, Lord, there's a method to his madness. Because through that entire time, I've been looking forward to the end result of my recovery portion. There's one thing that I've always, that, that, that's, and it's not just me. Say if Patrick passes by me in the gym, and I just finished working out. Bro, ready to go home. I have done came in here, spent two hours of my time. <sighs> Wish it was easy, right? I do. I, I, I mean, do you, do you wish it was easy? How much you bench? I just want to know. Did, like, what do you wrap out normally? God, mercy, whatever. So I'm barely hitting 225 at one point, and 400 pounds. Wow, it's insane. So that's not easy. But being there, whenever you were doing it, it, took time to get to that point. How good did it feel when you hit it? Whoa, let me tell you. I bet you got, it was like a 400 club. When I first deadlifted, I deadlifted 405 one time and got up and said, ah. But it took me time to get to the 405. It took me time. I had to learn how to do 145 and then 200, then 205. I was constantly building. But I was so focused and determined to get there, I finally got there. And then after I got to 405, I didn't care no more. Because I, I was in the 400 club, 400 bench club, 400 deadlift club. Anybody will tell you, bro, did you just hit 315? 300 club, official. Especially when you're doing it correctly. So I was like, man, I'm operating the correct way. And I got there because I'd done what I was supposed to do. So now I, and I started using that as, Lord, I've went through all this this year. And, and may, like I might have done things different that could have got me to the result, which is what I'm looking forward to. But... I was here and I did it to the best of my ability. And Lord, you got me here. Thank you for bringing me through this. Now I'm going to read verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So it's like everything you could, everything like God is just saying, put the armor on. Just put it on. Nothing else. Quit trying to do more than what you're supposed to do. Quit trying to go outside of that boundary of, 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 of you know, you're trying to do more. You see what I'm saying? Do what you're supposed to do. That's where your faith and your trust comes in. If you just put this on, because I do the rest. All he's asking, put on that armor. 
Just put it on. All you got to do is establish it in your life. Put it on. That's what he's saying. If you just make this the foundation of your life, I do the rest. It's a simple commandment, literally. Because we are always in a building phase in the spiritual and in the natural. We are always in a, uh, in, in, in a building phase. That's what God wants to do. And I believe that thoroughly, that God wants you to, He wants to build you. He wants you to like, hey, look, time to work out. I'm going to get you moving. I'm going to get you to another level you didn't know you were capable of. There's another kind of rest than me just laying down sleeping. There's a rest knowing that I can face anything and know God is with me. See how much more, like, allow that to just sink in for a second. Like, I can do anything in this world, and I know God is there. That brings me rest. Even if it's for a, a year I'm going through something, man, God's with me. God was with me at the beginning. And He told me to put the armor on, so I put it on. And He kept me the whole time. It didn't feel good all the time, but it, I'm here. Which is something Satan can't take from you if you don't put, as long as you put that armor on. But he says, put the full armor on. So I'm going to read the next verse. I'm going to go from 14 through 17. Stand therefore, having your loins girt, girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. When I work out alone, I'm only capable of a certain amount of reps. But, when I have a spotter, it comes when I have a spotter, you start seeing something more. And this hit me really hard. That word spotter, I was like, I was sitting there, I was like, oh my gosh, God, you're the spotter while you're working out. Work out by yourself when you've got all that weight above you. You're going to be thinking of many ways to avoid. How can I push this? How can I build? But if I know God's behind it, that weight will not fall on me. If I know Patrick's behind me when I'm fixing the, hey, man, I'm going to max out on bench today. I'm thinking of hitting 250. All right, let's get it. But if I go in there without him, what risk do I run? Huge risk. Because sometimes I don't even want the safety beam on. Safety beam just messes with my head. I don't want nothing safe about this. I'm ready to hit 250. So, I go in there, nobody's behind me. So, at that same point, like I said, and when it comes to a rep or someone who's actually going to do it right, and you know what I'm talking about, you better hit that rep the way it's supposed to go. One mistake is all you need for that weight to fall. What if your wrist gave out? I've seen people that their pectoral muscle tear. And these are big guys that can handle that weight. Pop, boom. And that 400, 5, I've seen it. Boom, land on that chest. And you just hope to God that their heart didn't stop. It's like, oh my God. Oh, dude. It's a sickening feeling to watch. You can look this up on YouTube, these guys. It happens to it a lot of times. But that spotter pushes me further than what I expected. I begin to see something else. The extra rep. The extra rep that you wasn't planning on doing is what builds. When you got that spotter. And the thing about it is when they're standing over you, they say, all right, you want lift off? Yeah, I'll take lift off. Boom. And he lifts it up. All right, go. But I'm able to see the spotter at the same time. My eyes are open at the same time. I don't close my eyes when I'm repping it out. The fact that I see the spotter there allows me to know, hey, he's got me. And what does he do? He's right there with that hand. I see that hand there. That means if it falls, whoom, it ain't just me pushing, it's him pulling. So it further prevents that weight from crushing me, potentially killing me. We max out. We max out all the time spiritually, bro. We're always uh, hitting something that's heavier than what we expected. Since I started preaching, whoa. I thought the tax was going to get easier. No! They're amplified times a thousand. And I'm like, Lord, this is so much to bear. Maybe God's saying, there's so much more in you. Goliath is so big. He's too strong. He's so, and God's like, he's so big, how can you miss him? It takes it differently. When, when God is the spotter, man, 
When you have on that full armor, what does it allow you to do? To see. So I was like, man, no, like, and here's the thing, here's the thing. Now imagine this. Imagine I'm fixing the max out, right? And I got this, we're just going to call it a trial. I got this trial, and I'm like, all right. Because when I get in there, I got to prep myself mentally. What do they do? Sometimes they'll sit there behind you. You're like, all right. You're sitting there, and they'll come up, someone will come up and go, wow. And they'll hit your back really hard, or you'll smell some to wake you up. Hey, man, you know, you got you to gotta set the tone for this rep. I got to set the tone for it. So I go over there, and I'm like, all right. He hits me in the back, and it hurts. And I'm like, but you know what? I'm awake now. So then I finally lay down. Whew, whew. And he's like, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right. But what we do as Christians now is that at the same time, I'm trying to, you know, maybe we start losing control, right? Maybe it's, not, it's too hard. And then I start losing control. Well, here comes God like, don't worry, I'm spotting you. He goes to pull it, but then you begin to pull it back down. You start pulling away. God's like, what are you doing? I'm here for a reason. Put on the armor. I got you. You don't have to worry about it. So you begin to like, mm -mm, no. And you start pulling it. That is, that is literally what it looks like. We will be in this and say, no, God. I, mm -mm, mm -mm, and you will. It's like you're pulling against it. Here God is trying to assist and you're trying to pull against him. You asked him to be there. And yet you're ignoring him when he's there. I've done that many times where I've said, God, help me in this. And I've ignored him at the same time I'm asking him a question because he wasn't telling me what I wanted to hear. So instead of me being assisted, I'm trying to pull it to pull the weight on me. You know what? That's what happens when you don't put on the full armor. There's no that that completeness isn't there, because if I just would see God instead of myself or if I saw God instead of the weight. If I saw God instead of the trial, then at the same time, I don't have to worry. All I got to do is do what I'm supposed to do by putting on the full armor and giving everything to him. Because all he's trying to do is build. So at the same time, he's like, and what do they do during the rep? Let's go. They hype you up. God's doing the same thing. Let's go. Get up. But God, I've fallen. Well, get up. You have no excuse. I've designed you to be built. I want you to be stronger. I brought you here. Now push the weight. Fight through this. Go through the valley. There's a reason why I didn't tear the valley down. Because I want you to see something else inside of you of what you are capable of. Because until I show you this, you're going to run from that valley, never seeing your potential. You'll never see where you're supposed to be if you keep running in fear. But if you just lay here and just allow me to do what I'm supposed to do, I can show you the next level of what you're supposed to be. I can show you that level. I'm ready to get to the next level. But man, it hurts. Because then people start coming against you. People start running their mouth. They start persecuting you. They start tearing you down. And all you did was open up the Bible. You didn't do nothing else. Can I see your Bible for a second? All you, all you literally have to do now to cause commotion. Literally. You don't do nothing else. Walk in there. Hmm. Like I know how you feel. Because I, I get mad. I get up in my feelings sometimes. And I've got to sit there and say... All right, my feelings are granted. God's like, okay, you feel this way. All right, I know the answer to that. The Word, let's establish it. But God, I feel this way. I know how you feel. But what does the Word say? It comes, it's so, it's so simple. But then people get so upset like, but, but, I, but I'm justified in my feeling. I'm trying to show you who you are. It's crazy what one book will do to an, to an entire nation. One book, one name. And all of a sudden, the entire world will say, uh-uh, uh-uh, because that's, uh, that, no, I don't agree. I'm so, I, it makes me mad sometimes. But I've got to say, all right, Lord, it's made me mad for a reason. What are you trying to show me? Because there's something I'm missing here. God's like, okay, put on the armor. I'm about to show you. Open your eyes. That way I can show you. Because until you look, until I look at that spotter, what happens when you don't look at the spotter? Well, what? You lose focus when you're not focused on the spotter. Right? And there's another thing you've got to learn. Balance. Old, for, old workout buddy of mine. Old workout buddy of mine. I was going to the flat bench. He's over here on the Smith machine. I just 135. Simple. Going in there and hitting it out. He was so focused on that Smith machine. And I walked by all the time. Bro, you're just pushing. You need to learn how to balance that bar. 
That bar is 45 pounds. Sometimes 35, but most times it's 45 pounds. But you've got to go over there to do it. But it's so easy to throw on how many plates on each side when it's already a guided track, making it so much easier for you. He's not trying to just like, he wasn't trying to just like work out. He wanted to build, bro. Go over here. And then we do. We go over here. We're to, this guy was bigger than me, man. And that bar come off. The whole way down. I said, bro, you need to work out on this bar. You can't even balance it out. I, I said, it caught my attention. The balance of the word. The balance of the scripture will balance your life. You're going through this and not looking at the word. It, like, well, like I have been there at the same point where I'm like trying to go through this, but I, my eyes are closed. And if your eyes are closed on that bar, you got to feel like, okay, what am I doing here? I'm trying to bench this. And then you start coming down. It's so out of whack when your eyes aren't open. Like, Lord, if I just open my eyes for acknowledgement, if I just acknowledge, literally, if I just acknowledge you, you will show me. I can see. I can prove the balance. Like, whoa, Lord, you told me. And all I had to do was open my eyes. Now, when I rep, I can hit it cleanly. And you're my spotter. But God, I'm trying to recover. <laughs> Think about that, right? You've been through all this. It's like, okay, we'll always go back to that. I, I want to recover. Man, it's time for me to rest. I spent five days in the gym. Nicole called me. You working out today? No. I done did all I can do the week, bro. I'm done. I want to sit down. I don't want to be in that building. I don't want to be at the gym. There's a rest knowing that God will show you. There is rest knowing that they're like, it ain't just laying down. There's a rest of, hey, I can have peace of mind through this valley. Makes you happy. Man, Lord, you brought me through this before. You'll do it again. It's a, he's a forever God. He's an ultimate God. He's a peaceful God. He's a just God. He is that. And you can show me, Lord, man, for the rest of my days, you'll never leave me. Man, that's rest. I think it's so much deeper than me just laying down going to sleep, literally. I can get up in the morning, God, you are still God. Before I go to bed, God, you didn't change. You're still there. God, I woke up another panic attack and I just kept saying your name and I went back to sleep and like I said the other Sunday and that two hours of rest was like eight. But what if I get up and I still feel tired? I don't want to get out of bed. But as a working man, you still do it anyway because you know you got stuff to do. Right? Sometimes you just get up. I go, me, me, me and my dad's got a phrase. Just bite the bullet, son. He's been telling me that for years. I hate that. I hate, mm, hate it. Bite the bullet. Bite the bullet, dude. Get up. People dependent on you. Get up. All right. I'm going to get up anyways. And I got to work and I said, Dad, I need you to pray for me. He's like, huh? He's like, all right. He said, I've been here. So I'm like, I know. Got to get through this day. And then when I finally finished, I get home. I'm like, man, I did it. I've I done the extra rep. That extra rep is what that builds. But it's also the hardest because it's where you start. It's the struggle. You know, it's like I'm pushing. And God's like, get up. Push it. Push it. There's a certain part of the elbow they'll call the breaking point whenever you're pressing. When you get past that breaking point, it's God's like, I will provide past the breaking point. All you got to do is push. Do what I'm telling you to do. Have faith in me. Look at me. Acknowledge me. I know you're tired. I know you. But what if God calls us after, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm about to rest. What if God needs you immediately again? What if he calls you out of nowhere like, I need you to get up, I need you to do this, I need you to do that. But Lord, you told me you would provide me rest. The rest, knowing my outcome is already done, and that the fact that I just need to put the armor on. I'm not afraid to max out. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. Remain sober, be vigilant. Remain sober, stay that way. Be vigilant. When you max out, you see the weight you're trying to push, man. And here's the thing. I'm going to ask someone who I know, like, for instance, 
Say I'm a bench press 250. This is just shot out of a cannon here. Babe, I need you to spot me. She doesn't work out like I do. 250. Think about this. I need you to spot me. So that means you're in control of this weight if it falls. 250. Hey, Patrick. I'm going to go to Patrick, somebody who I know can handle the weight. I need you to spot me 250. You know how I know? Because I know he's spiritually athletic. God, will you spot me? Put the armor on. I got you. It changes the dynamic. It changes the, the working out process. God, I know you're there. You see this. You see what's going on. All right. God's your hype man. He is. He's a hype man. Ah, get ready. We're here to build. We don't give up. We don't stop. I go ask somebody that I know that can handle this. I'm, I'm done trying to sit on a throne that it wasn't mine to sit on. Done. So then I go to God. God, you got me? Because I know you. Think about that. I know you, Patrick. You can bench over 400 pounds. Say we're talking to Prime Patrick. Or even now, you can still bench more than me. I, I, I can guarantee you can. But I know. I know. You know how I know? I can tell you work out. You, I can see a spirit all around you. Then I can see it. God, I'll actually look at you. I can see that you're there. I can see that you can handle this. Because you've always done it. Will you spot me? I'm already there. See how it changes? When, you, when you're able to acknowledge but open up your eyes. Bam. Like I said weeks ago, he come up to me. Daddy, 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 daddy. And I'm like... I was on my phone. Daddy, daddy. He was one time about his new tablet. So then whenever he finally saw that I looked at him, he revealed and opened up. God's always saying your name. But it's when you open up your eyes and look. That's when the revelation starts to appear. You have to. The, it's just as simple as that. It's the acknowledgement of who God is, where he's at, who he is, and his might. You'll understand nothing you will do is impossible. Nothing through him. All I got to do is open my eyes. That way, when I open my eyes, I'll be able to understand balance. Because I can't understand balance if my mind isn't on Him, if my focus isn't on Him. Just like if my focus isn't on that bench press. If I ain't looking at it, if I don't see His hands, then how do I know He's got me? We put blinders on. Lord, they did me wrong. Love them anyways. I'm trying to show you you're, you're capable of loving despite the circumstance, despite how they treat you and they persecute you because I'm going to make your table in the midst of your enemies. Can you eat? You can't even love them over here. How can you eat? I'm trying to show you that if you just love them here, you can eat in peace here. See, there's a whole nother level God's bringing us to. Whole nother level. So then there's a, a, a way to talk about recovery. Recovery as a process of change through which individuals improve their health and wellness, live direct, self-directed lives, and strive to reach their full potential. We are in the business of proving the devil wrong every single day. And I'm just as guilty as anybody, probably the most guilty when I haven't done it. I'm learning this most recently. Maxing out is a way of demonstrating your abilities. Love you guys. Yes, sir. Maxing out is a way of demonstrating your abilities. And working out is how you improve technique to increase strength and build muscle. So when the attacks come, I'm going to show Satan my abilities that God's given me. Because Satan will know you've been working out. Satan will know what armor you're wearing. Satan will know what you put on. He does. He's, a, he's, a, he's of wild. He's of method. He's of strategy. He knows what is going to bother you. But if you don't have that armor on, he knows exactly where to hit. But here's the, here's the crazy thing. Because you have to have a separate process to recover from working out. Did you know that the Word provides the healing? So you're able to work out at the same time, recover. That's crazy. I can, I can build and work out all at the same time. I recover from the Word. The Word provides my healing. So God, you're not letting me rest. Bro, if you only knew that my Word provides the same healing that you're searching for. So at the same time you're going through this, I provide that rest throughout the entire process. The Word provides the healing. 
I don't have to take three days out of my time to stop doing what I'm doing just to be able to recover. I can, it's a continuous thing through the Word of God. I can continue doing all this and then still keep going because of God, because the Word provides healing. So that means from the beginning there, boom, I'm out. God needs me to do something else. Well, God provides the healing and the rest. So I don't have to be worried about taking two or three days off. I can continue because of Him. You'll, like that to me is so important because I'm able to recover and never worry about a rest period. God provides the rest. He provides the healing. So no matter what, through that trial, I'm being, come on, I'm being healed at the same time. Man. Healing is already taking place. I didn't know that until I looked. I didn't know that until I allowed. I didn't know that until I said, God, what does this do? I work out because I love it, right? Because you love it and you got to 400 pounds. You didn't get there if you didn't love working out. Because I, because I love working out, I do it consistently. And I put my heart into it. Okay. And I see results fast, right? When you do it, when you do it how you're supposed to. All right. Take the word of God. God, I love you. So what do I do? I'm going to consistently talk to you. I'm going to consistently pray. I'm going to consistently go with you. And I'm going to do it right. And I will see results fast. Nobody can make the excuse to say, I never found God. Yes, you can. If you want God, He's there. Never make the excuse that I, I just, I'm just not there. God is there. He's a provider. It says, seek me and you will find. Search my righteousness and you will have it. If you just open your eye and I, and I you know, and like I said, I could sit here and preach to myself because this is hitting me in such a hard way than it should have. But if I just opened my eyes before, I would have already been there. But I was too busy pulling the weight. I was too busy not allowing him to do his part because I was trying to sit on my own throne. Get off the throne. Like, it was as simple as that. Open your eyes up. He's talking to you. But you're not going to know that if we don't remove those blinders. Lord... You said seek and you'll find, and I will find. Nobody in this world can ever make the excuse that God won't present himself to you. Only if you want it. If you want God, he'll show you. Literally, that's, that's such a great thing. Does that not bring anybody in here rest? Knowing that I can ask him about anything and he'll tell me? It ain't going to be the answer I'm looking for sometimes, but it's the best answer. But it provides me a whole, a whole lot of rest because I can say, Lord, I can always talk and you'll, and you'll listen to me. Always. You know, um, even Jesus, when Jesus was tempted, he used the word. Alan preached about this a long time ago. It still stays with me to this day. Whenever he went against, when, when, when Satan appeared to him to tempt him, I'll give you this if you just bow. His first reply was the word. First reply, the full armor. Full armor. That'll be your first reaction. What the word says this. The word says that. I was like, man, that still sticks with me to this day. Is it no matter what, even in the midst of being tempted, but the Word says this, your healing and your rest begin to pop up. Oh, that revelation, I can see now. And I also started thinking, you know, because uh, you can tell people have been working out, right? You can see it. They're like, bro, you can tell that. You can just tell he's a linebacker. Look at him. You can tell he's a believer because he's humble. He talks about God. I had it was a joke made about me at work talking about how, and I, I took such a, like, I mean, it's, I didn't want to blow my head up a little bit too much, but I was like, man, that made me feel so good. Is that my friends think, yeah, BJ, he, at one point he's going to talk about God. And I was just like, it don't matter. But to me, and then he went a little bit far like, like God needed me to talk about him. And I was just like, God don't need anybody to talk for him. God, God talks, talk. Like, it's just no other way. But I'm just a willing vessel. But, uh, like, I want to I wanna mention God at some point. That spirit man is alive. And it shows you. So then, now, and, I, and I'm bringing this to a close. Uh, David. David. So it's like. Got this whole army. It's, it's so crazy. You can use David as a reference, right? You got this whole army, of, uh, army afraid. Whole army. The entire army. They ain't even looking at the army. They're looking at this man. Look at this dude who's just big. This big guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're afraid of him. So now, 
David shows up. I believe David was very athletic. I saw a video of what a lie, of a guy using a sling. Man, for the sling to have force behind it, what do you do? You wind up and you throw the force into it. And I saw him as if he was like taking off a few feet and spun him and, and popped him. And he was hitting with precision accuracy. And I was like, man, you have to be in shape for that. And then when they, walk, when they walked up, the, the, it's like the demonic would, will, will pop up. What are you doing here, David? Bro, this is what we do. You belong out in the field. David's like, bro, are we not here for the same cause? Are we not here to do the same thing? I'm just offering help. He's talking about God, and y'all ain't doing anything about it. Literally, I could just, I thought, I was like, man, well, God, I bet you he was athletic. You got to be athletic. Because then when he brought up about how he had to go at, like the song, you leave me, you leave the 99 to come after me, one sheep leaves, and you're coming after it. He said, God was, you know, God was with me when I went after the bear. God was here. Why do you not think God ain't going to be here? I'm just bringing the same God that went with me here. He took down, think about it. He took it down. The entire Israel army raised up for this purpose and won't do nothing but a man over You know why? God wasn't in the vision. They didn't see it. Because even when he showed up, but why are you here? You're trying to be, oh, because now you're just going to be all prideful and think you can just do it? Bro, I'm bringing the Lord with me. It's as simple as that. And then, like I said, life is on a repetitive cycle, right? So, what Goliath said to him, he repeated back. I'm going to put it on repeat. So he repeated it and then killed him and used the old man's sword against him. Man. A revelation that he could see that the entire army couldn't. Talk about having on the full armor as opposed to not. It's like, man, it was, I guarantee you his athletic. You've got to be athletic to be able to do something like that. But it showed your spiritual life will affect your natural. It will improve your natural. Especially when the, when, when the flesh flares up, you'll be able to be more sensitive to that and you'll be able to understand like, uh-uh, not today. God cussed me out a while back. Uh -uh. You're not getting a reaction out of me, man. I'm done. Uh -uh. You come back here. Nope. I'm good. You have a good day. I didn't stop. And now, and I see that, and this is what I'm going to end with, is that that full armor that we put on, do you know that, it, that at the same time that armor grows? That's the knowledge of what God gives you over time. Like He processes that Word of God. The more you read, the bigger that knowledge grows. The more you work out, the more your muscles grow. The more you stay in the Bible, the more the Word grows in you. So that armor grows at the same time. So now when you show up, you can see that like, whoa, man. You can just see he works out. Well, he, he, he's, this, he's just that guy. Look how big his armor is. To where you don't even have to talk to demons for them to manifest. You can just show up. And they start popping up out of nowhere. When that Holy Spirit, I mean, like I've seen, I've seen the videos. They just walk up. Boom, those demons start manifesting. When you, whoop, that armor. I can just see it now. It's just like, man, that armor. There's something about that armor. It's going to protect you, and you're going to grow at the same time. That armor gets bigger, literally. It just keeps growing. There's no end to God. Every, it's, it's, it's immaculate. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And just, it just consumes you. Man, now I feel powerful. Now I can rest because I'm wearing my armor. To so put on the full armor, spiritually sound will bring natural sound. Spiritual life is first, and then the natural comes next. If anybody needs prayer, y'all can come up here and receive prayer. If not, I'm going to close with a, I'm close with a final prayer. Lord, we thank you for today, God. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for everything. I mean, I mean, we can continue thanking you and thanking you, and just, it doesn't seem like it would ever stop as, as much as we need you. Um, and we thank you for uh, today. We, we thank you for tomorrow. We thank you for last week. We thank you for waking us up. Lord, we just thank you. Like, there's... How much more can I say, God? I'm running out of words. And I still feel like I still owe you gratitude. Like, uh, I mean, it's just, that's just how this. Lord, we love you. We know you love us. Thank you for being our spotter. 
Thank you for being the one that's over us. Thank you for everything that you do and everything that you continue to do because you never stop. And we ask that you give us travel mercy, God. Ask that you stay with us, that you go with us. Um, And we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And again, we say without you, none of this would be possible. It literally is. And I don't just say that, you know, so easily. It's because hell is the complete absence of you. And Lord, we thank you that we don't have to deal with that absence. It literally is because of you that we can walk. It's because of you that we can talk and that we can have that sound mind. And anybody that ever watches this live, this stream online, we ask that it touch them and their eyes that are opened. We pray for everybody out there that is struggling, Lord, and here that is struggling. We pray that that chain, that they finally see that the chain has been broken and it broke the day you died on the cross. You are a forever chain breaker. In Jesus' name we thank you, Lord. Amen.